Good morning. Take a moment and welcome those next to you. And a special welcome today to Dell and Dolores' family on the occasion of their 70th anniversary this past week. Our order of service is printed this morning in the bulletin, and our opening hymn is number 804. We rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation, for a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. And now, O oh Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment. And they who dwell in it will die in it like manner. But my salvation will be forever. And my righteousness will never be dismayed. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. Your decrees are very trustworthy. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. Yeah. Be on guard. Yeah. 
keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. As we live in the last days waiting for Jesus to return, we are called to remember his promises and that we are his people. Yet sometimes we forget what he has asked us to do. As God's beloved, we are called to build ourselves up in our most holy faith. Lord Jesus, we confess that we neglect being built up by your word and spirit. Forgive us and remember us. As God's beloved, we, urge, we are urged to pray in the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we confess that we neglect to converse with you in prayer and to guide our prayer life according to your word and your will. Forgive us and remember us. As God's beloved, we are urged to keep ourselves in the love of God. Lord Jesus, we confess that we neglect to remember our baptism. Forgive us and remember us. As God's beloved, we are urged to wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we confess that we neglect to embrace the mercy that is ours in you as we look forward to your return. Forgive us and remember us. As God's beloved, we are urged to have mercy on those who doubt. Lord Jesus, we confess that we fail to love others as you have first loved us. Forgive us and remember us. As God's beloved, we are urged to share our faith with others. Lord Jesus, As Jesus was on the cross, the thief next to him asked, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. As Jesus remembered the thief, he remembers you are his beloved child, and he remembers your sin no more. As a called and ordained servant of Jesus Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. O oh Lord, make me know my end, and what is the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting I am. Behold, you have made my days a few handbreadths, and my lifetime is as nothing before you. And now, O oh Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of the fool. Hear my prayer, O oh Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. You may be seated. We sing hymn 801.
We rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, as we wait for your return, lead us by your spirit to remember that we are your people. Build us out in this most holy faith and keep us in your love as we wait for your mercy that leads to eternal life. As those who have received mercy, we ask you to empower us to be merciful. As you have saved us by grace through faith, work through us as you save others by snatching them out of the fire. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Old Testament reading for the last Sunday of the church year is from Isaiah chapter 51. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation, for a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment. And they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever. And my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The epistle is from the book of Jude. But you, beloved, build yourselves up in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others, show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Alleluia. We rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. And Jesus said, In those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great glory, with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening or at midnight or when the cock crows or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father You may be seated, we sing him 336.
grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is from the book of Jude, which was just read. It doesn't take long to forget. By the time you get into the next room, you've forgotten why you went there. Just days or weeks after national calamities, the world seems to forget and move on to the next big thing. And though you know you are baptized into Christ, it's a daily battle to remember who you really are, a child of God, no more and no less. And it's easy to forget the letter of Jude also. It's just 25 verses, the second shortest book in the Bible. Obadiah in the Old Testament only has 21 verses. But Jude has a very important message for us, especially on this last Sunday of the church year, when we look ahead to Jesus' return on the last day. And his, his message is about not forgetting, or stated positively, about remembering. Jude teaches us that the church remembers Jesus because Jesus remembers his church. And that's not as obvious a message as it seems. It's easy to forget. It's happened before. The church has forgotten Jesus. And what happens when you forget who Jesus is and what he said? Jude wrote his little epistle around the year 68 AD, about 35 years after the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus. Most of the disciples had died by this time. And Jude, though he's not an apostle himself, is compelled to write to the church in their place. And so he starts out his letter, Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ, and the brother of James, to those who are called, beloved in God the Father, and kept for Jesus Christ. May mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. He writes with the stated purpose to remind you that although you once fully knew it, that Jesus, who saved a people out of the land of Egypt, afterwards destroyed those who did not believe. The church, just a few years after Christ's ascension, had forgotten Jesus. They had forgotten his promised return. They had forgotten that he will come back as both savior and destroyer. Just as it happened in Egypt long ago when the destroyer went from house to house and killed every firstborn of the Egyptians and passed over the firstborn of the Israelites whose houses were stained with the blood of the lamb. And having forgotten the reality of who Jesus is, some of the Christians perverted the grace of God into sensuality. They perverted the grace of God into license. Forgiveness was so cheap that anything they did was okay. And in so doing, they denied the only master and Lord, Jesus. And so Jude calls to remember who Jesus is and what he has said as both Savior and as destroyer. What happens when you forget that Jesus will one day return as the Savior of those who believe? 
you see the problems of the world you see the riots and the destruction when things don't go the way people want you see the corruption in congress in washington you see the persecution of god's people throughout the world and even if you do not participate in any of them to one degree or another you're tempted to distance yourself about thinking about them by thinking about the good old days, believing that the answer to all the world's problems lies in the past and not the future. We're tempted to believe that all the world's problems can be solved by someone or something other than Jesus. And so Jude calls us to remember Remember instead that Jesus, and Jesus alone, is the Savior of this world. And Jesus alone is your Savior. He has saved you from sin and death by his death and resurrection. And he saves you even now by his word and spirit, through the means of grace where he does not remember our sin, but forgives it. And he will save you finally and fully from this world that's destined for destruction when he comes again in all his glory and fills you with joy. What happens when you forget about Jesus who also returns as the destroyer of those who did not believe. If we don't see Jesus as judge, both for our salvation and for eternal damnation, then we think that we are securely saved, that we can do what we want. We're tempted just as the church in all times and places is tempted to be comfortable in the way we do things, even in our sinning, in living the way we want to leave, live, the way society says instead of the way God says. We fall into patterns of thinking and patterns of doing that we know are not in accordance with the word of God, but we just shrug and go on. We convince ourselves that we don't need to worry about it or change anything. Because when Christ returns, he'll forgive us. So we need to be reminded that Christ does come as our judge. And as our judge, he calls you to repentance. He calls you to trust in his forgiveness. He calls you to live a new life according to his word. And he calls you to remember that those who do forget will be destroyed in eternal, never-ending punishment. And as frightening as that is, how comforting it is to remember that Jesus never forgets you. God addresses our forgetting that Jesus is the Savior and Destroyer by reminding us in the same way he did the early church through Jude, by preparing us for the future, by pointing us to the past, to reminding us that God has called you to faith. He has loved you and has kept you in the faith. And by reminding you that God has promised to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless on that day of his glorious return. And so we always remember about Jesus that he hears your prayer, the prayer that echoes the thief on the, pro on the cross. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. 
and Jesus does. Jesus remembers you, that he always been and always will be mindful of you. He who has all glory, all majesty, all dominion and authority before all time and now and forever. He remembers you by calling you by name, by loving you and keeping you with his church. He called you through the waters of baptism, where he joins you to himself and to all other believers in him. And he continues to love you by feeding you with his body and his blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. And he continues to feed us with the fruits of his cross, promising to keep you in the one true faith by his word and spirit until the day you see him face to face. In our, in our colic, we prayed, Lord Jesus Christ, so govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that ever mindful of your glorious return, we may persevere in both faith and holiness of living. Jesus lives and reigns. He hears our prayer. He answers you. He remembers you. And he calls on you to remember him today and forever. And we do remember Jesus. Even if we don't remember all those things that Jude wrote about, we remember Jesus as we read his word, as we hear his word, as we sing praise to him, as we receive his body and blood. And now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. And we continue with the gathering of the offering.
In our prayers this morning, we remember our teachers who will be attending the Missouri District Teachers Conference at Lake of the Ozarks this evening through Tuesday. So we, ask, we pray for safe travel for them. And we remember Dell and Dolores on, the, on their 70th anniversary. Let us rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord Jesus, you reign robed in majesty. Keep us awake, alert, and blameless as we wait for your return so that we may join you in your kingdom. Your salvation will be forever and your righteousness will never be dismayed. As we make our pilgrimage through this world, we are attacked in heart, soul, strength, and mind. We remember those among us who are struggling and we place them in your healing hands. Your salvation will be forever, and your righteousness will never be dismayed. You are the Lord of all and the ruler above all rulers. Give wisdom to those who govern our country. Guide and protect those who serve as first responders in our communities. Your salvation will be forever, and your righteousness will never be dismayed. As you have saved us and brought us to faith in you, work your saving work through us and all your missionary people around the globe so others experience your mercy. Oh, Lord God, we give thanks to you for the 70 years of marriage that you granted to Dell and Dolores. Bless them in the years to come so that they may remain faithful to you and devoted to each other. By your presence, glad in each day that you graciously grant them. And, O oh Lord, we ask you to look with favor upon our teachers as they travel to the conference this week and to all the teachers in the Missouri District as they go, that all may arrive and return home safely. Your, your salvation will be forever, and your righteousness will never be dismayed. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Lord God, King of the universe, for you are the ruler of all things and are enthroned in majesty. As we lift our eyes to the heavens, we are reminded that you came to earth in the person of your son, Jesus, who came to give us life to the fullest through his perfect life, death, and resurrection. As we watch and wait for his return, we thank you for your spirit who calls us by the gospel, enlightens us with his gifts, makes us holy, and keeps us in the one true faith. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabbath, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us by sending your Son to be born of Mary and to die on the cross once for all the sins of the world. With repentance and joy, we receive the gift of salvation freely given by our Lord Jesus, who, having taken on our nature, took our sin and nailed it to the cross before rising again. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we remember his selfless sacrifice. We ask that as we participate in this meal of his body and blood, we do so to the building up of ourselves in the holy faith, keeping ourselves in the love of God while we wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. Graciously hear our prayers, keep us from stumbling, and present us blameless before your presence. 
To you alone, our Savior and Lord, be all glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now and forever. Amen. And we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, our Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, our Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy 